Hi there, I'm Trisha from Inspiration Laboratories and welcome back to another Science at Home Hangout. Today we're going to be talking about water science activities for kids. And uh, to start off, I have a little activity about density. And density of water, density of things that are in water, density of course is mass divided by wall, volume or the amount of stuff in a given volume. So I have some different ways that you can play with density and these are just graduated cylinders. You can use glass cups too. This just allows you to use a smaller amount um, and you, you can see the density layers a little bit taller. So I have some, let's start with some cold water. No, actually I'm going to make some sugar water. That works. So I have a little bit of sugar and I have some colored water. It's just yellow. You can make any color but it makes it easier to see the different um, layers. I'm going to add some sugar, a couple tablespoons to the water. I know you can't see the cup. I'll stir it for a few minutes. You can make it really sugary, or you can use salt as well to, if you're just going to do two different layers. And depending on how many, uh, how much sugar you put or how much salt you put, you can make a bunch of different layers and get the density towers. Uh, you may have seen the ones where they use different liquids like that have different densities. I like to just do it with sugar or the salt and you get the same effect. It's kind of fun. Um, okay. Lots of stirring to try to dissolve all that sugar I put in there. And then we'll put it in. I'm going to use the smaller one actually. I'll use the bigger one in a minute. I'll use the shorter one. Try not to spill it. Okay. And then I just have regular colored water, and this one plain, nothing added to it. And you can add it into it. I find that it mixes a lot if you just pour it. So I have a cool little syringe. Actually, I think I got this from the dentist. So anyway, sterile for cleaning. You can use uh, dropper, medicine droppers or little pipettes as well. It works really well for this. Uh, oh, in my oceanography class, that's what I always had them do. They used little droppers and got to drop it in and you can actually watch the drops fall and predict the density. So for this one, I'm just going to try to make the density layer. So I have my sugar water on the bottom, and this has no sugar in it, so we would expect that it would go on the top. And so you can just make a nice layer. I can show it without the... You can watch how it falls a little bit down, and because of gravity, it's going down into the mix. And that's why if you can pour it very, very slowly and along the side, which the syringe helps you do, it'll stay up the top. And so, just one little layer of sugar. We could even make a sugar solution that is in between these densities and drop it there, and it should make a layer, a nice layer in the middle. I can show you paper, too, if that helps. You can see the layer there? Those two. That's with sugar. I said you can use it with salt or whatever. Then you can do with hot and cold water as well. So if I have some cold water, same water before, cold, and we can put some warm water. Let's see if this is warm enough. And really, to get the layers, you don't have to have big different density differences. And that's the cool part when I talk to my oceanography class. The density differences in, in the ocean are very, very small, and so you get, you get different masses of water with different densities with very small changes in the density, and that's what you get lots of ocean circulation and currents down in the deep because of that. So it's really cool. So let's see. Again, hot water. And so, again, it goes down to the bottom, and then you can see this one very well. I can see it. And that's the cool part. You can see it when you're closer to it. If I can make the camera closer. But you can see not very well, can you? Add a little bit more. You can see the differences. Sometimes the colors mix because when you're using food coloring, the, the food coloring will mix, but the other but you're still getting the layers. It's just the food coloring that's mixing. And maybe it's the colors I've chosen. We ran out of blue food coloring because Aiden decided to make lots and lots of blue hurricanes 
the other day. So if you haven't seen his little hurricane video, you probably should check it out because it's a really little simple thing with water you can make with for kids too to show hurricanes. And you can barely see it on the top there. Okay. And the other thing, the post that you'll find today on our site on Inspiration Laboratories, we did layers with juice. And so this is grape juice on the bottom, and we have um, apple juice on the top. Actually, I lied, because that's our sugar water that we just used, right? <laughs> it's like, that's the wrong colors. Here you go. That's better, right? Grape juice on the bottom, apple juice on the top. And we made a five-layer density tower using just juice, fruit juices. So we had grape juice, orange juice, apple juice, um, white grape juice. That's white grape juice on the top, sorry. And that's regular grape juice on the bottom. The white grape juice has, is called light grape juice. They use sucralose instead of sweetening it with regular sugar. And so it has even less sugar in it, so less density. And then we did the top layer with just water, colored water, so we got five. Um, layers and it's a fun little drink that you can drink afterwards. Aiden was all excited to have his um, drink that had different colors and layers. It was fun. The one fun thing that we found about that was we expected our um, apple juice to be our second layer so it would have been grape juice, apple juice, orange juice, then our second white grape juice but our orange juice actually was more dense than the apple juice, so it sunk down below it. So when we did our layer, it, was ch uh, the, it wasn't completely based on the sugar content. So when you're experimenting, you have to kind of figure out your layers based on what's happening. But the cool thing that the orange juice showed us was that density is not, it's not just about the amount of sugar that's in the water, it's about the amount of stuff per volume. So all of what, all the things that are in the water will help make up the density of the solution. So anyway, just some fun little thing to do with water or with juice in this case. And we've got lots of other uh, water ideas to show you. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Maggie. Hi. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my voice there. Um, right, I'll be very quick and delve right in and then explain how we came up with this um, activity. I just want to show you this glass. It's already starting to, the frosting is already starting to go. Basically, I put um, just an ordinary glass in the fridge took it out and it came out white. Um, after a little while it looks like this and then after a little bit longer it looks like this. And if you, I don't think you can see it but you certainly can feel it. Uh, basically it's wet on the outside so the big question is what's happened. Um, and the reason I, we, we came up with this sort of little experiment is that we've been swimming all week and the pool that we're in is in kind of like a little greenhouse tunnel and we were sitting there and we got dripped on and um, you know, my son was going, oh, mommy, I'm getting ripped on. That's really yucky. And I was like, do you know why that's happening? So it's a really great way to kind of to think and discuss about something that's happening around us and kind of explore the science of it. And basically what is happening, um, and sort of in a reverse way but similar, <laughs> is, uh, well, I'll start with the glass and then I'll talk about the pool, but it's the same principle. Um, with the glass, when you stick it in the fridge, obviously it's dry, or sorry, in the freezer it's dry, um, but you're reducing its temperature. So when you take it back out, what you're kind of doing is you're encouraging the water molecules that are in the, in the air to condense because air holds water and um, obviously water can evaporate and there's sort of a humidity, there's water in the air and the coldness of the glass is making that water turn, that's evaporated and in the gas status, it's making it turn back into liquid and when you take it out of the fridge you're basically getting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of tiny, 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 tiny little droplets which is why it looks white and then as time goes on these droplets start to connect together and form and they're kind of causing bigger and bigger droplets which is sort of the wetness that you're experiencing um, you're kind of connecting all the water bits together which is why it doesn't look white anymore also if you leave the glass to stand a bit longer I can't see, can't see it here but you get a little puddle on the, on the, on the table a tiny tiny puddle and it's basically just the droplets coming down and, and, and coming together uh, with the pool, it's sort of slightly the reverse. You've got the, the water of the swimming pool is heating up, and obviously it's steaming up and going up, up, up. Um, and then the outside of our little sort of greenhouse was cold. So as the steam hit the roof, it was condensing again. So it's a bit, the, the pool is actually simpler to explain than the glass, but it was really cool to try and recreate it at home. And when I did this to, um, at home, and I asked my son, so what do you think is happening? He said, 
condensation, mummy. So I was really pleased that we talked about it in the morning at, at the swimming pool and then we'd come home and we had a go at it and then we sort of showed daddy. And it's just um, like Anthea likes to say, it's, it's about introducing words and concepts and even if they don't understand all of it, I was just really pleased that he was trying to say the word again. I think he said something else actually the first time, but he was getting the word almost right and that's what it was all about and he was interested. Um, so that's our little uh, water experiment about how water evaporates and then condenses. I'm going to pass over to Emma now. Hi everyone, um, I'm going to talk to you today about surface tension. Um, so what happens if you have a bowl of water, the water molecules under the surface have all spread out equally in all directions, but the water molecules on the surface form a skin which um, helps things float. So um, what I'm going to do is just show you my bowl of water. Hopefully you can see the cocktail sticks on top. I'm going to drop a little bit of washing up liquid in and hopefully you can see those move. So um, that happens because the washing up liquid changes the way the water molecules lie on the top. And because water um, molecules move from low areas of low surface tension to high surface tension, that makes the cocktail stick or matchsticks, lobby sticks, whatever you use, move. Um, so it's just a really simple and fun way to introduce what's a fairly complicated concept to you children. Okay, um, I'm going to pass you on to Keris. Thank you. Hi, I'm Keris. Um, I'm so I've got a, a ice cubes in. Perfect time to do this. It, at the same time, introduce freezing. So you've got ice cubes in. Melting in full shape. And then <clears throat> another fun thing to do, and obviously compare the results and see what conditions. And the other fun thing, colour dyes. Now I've got all of these in glasses. I've got um, blue, yellow, and red because we're looking at. I can mix them up and see the colours melting. Um, I've used food colouring, which is why I'm keeping them in glasses. And then we do the mix bags, so it's a bit less messy. But you could use paint as well. Um, watered down paint which would wash off and then you can mix the colours together and the children can see how the different colours are and as it melts how the um, water goes out and the, from the ice and then you could freeze them again and see what different effects you've got. Uh, lovely summer experiments to do. I'm going to pass over to Anthea. Hi, thanks Keris. Um, we've been talking um, about water in lots of different ways, but one of them is, is about how water moves. Um, and we've been talking about the kind of like the, the way that everyone does it, which is water always finds the lowest point of gravity, and it's, it's amazing water because it goes to the tiniest little crack. You know, if it can find a little pathway down, it, it, will, it will travel down it, so it can kind of go down a big crack, a little crack, a big hole, a small hole. Um, and, find, and tracing water can kind of be interesting, so you can play kind of games with kids where you can kind of pour water, you can kind of set things up, pebbles and, and stuff, and the kids can kind of try and work out how to get it. The other thing that moves water, which you talked about, was wind, is wind. So it's another thing that you can do, and you can do visually by putting um, blobs of water on paper and getting them to blow it, obviously. Um, you can kind of do a little bit where you can kind of tilt the paper slightly. If they put a few blobs on the paper, you tilt it down, the water will run, and then also get them to blow in the opposite direction to how the paper's pointed, and then they can kind of see that although the water's trying to go down, it's also going to get blown sideways, which is another way that water moves. And obviously waves on the sea is, is a big movement of water. And the other way is capillary action, which is quite a hard thing to explain to children. Um, and uh, we've been talking about capillary action, um, and they've been playing around with the word and getting it wrong, calling it all kinds of things, which has been great fun. But capillary action is where um, water moves kind of against gravity. And water is described as, it's quite interesting actually, it's sticky. Okay, it likes to stick to things, so it likes to stick to itself, so all the molecules kind of like to stay quite close to each other, which is why when you spill things, you kind of get little 
blobs of water lying around, um, but they also like to stick to things um, like glass as well. So when you put glass tubes in water, you'll, or even straws actually, you'll see the kind of the water will go up higher than the water level in the container, and that's because of the, um, the, the, the way that water likes to stick to things, so it kind of, and how I describe it, I use the visual thing, is basically the water goes up the glass tube, and that the sides of the the water get pushed up and stick and they stick up and the water at the bottom where the surface tension is that Emma was talking about goes oh hang on wait for me and all the other bits move up and it kind of moves up in this kind of strange sort of almost caterpillar like or worm like motion up the tube until the weight the gravity pulling it down gets too much and it won't go up any further one of the simplest ways you can show it and it's great is using you've probably seen this on Pinterest and lots of other things, is using um, tea towels and glasses. And basically, not tea towels, sorry, paper towels. <laughs> um, and paper towels work. They're, 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 made, they're, a, they're a textile. They're actually a paper textile, and they've got lots of holes in them. And water likes to stick to the fibers, and as it moves up and clings to the fibers, the water fills in the little gaps. Um, and that's how you get all this technical layering and how they sell you all these paper towels because they absorb more water. Um, but for, for kids, what's really nice is you can kind of put it in. You can have glasses. Now, see if you can see this. You start off with um, some empty glasses. So these, these were full, and this one is empty. You put your paper towel in the full one, and you bend it in. You don't need to do two like I have here. Um, and basically, you can use clear water. I've colored it to make it easier. Um, and within an hour, the water will travel over until it's the same size in each glass. What you can then do to make it a little bit more interesting is you can kind of color the water. So this was a clear glass here and this one was red and this one was blue and within an hour the water traveled up the paper towels into the empty glass and created another, another color. Um, and you can then take that to another step actually. You can have a, a fourth glass so as the two glasses are going into the third glass, if this makes sense, and making one color, you can then have another paper towel going out of that glass that's filling. So when that gets to, that will fill in another glass. So you'll see them going down each stage as the levels, basically, of the water all become equal in each glass. And that's actually quite a good way of showing children how, how water moves, how it will kind of always go down to the lowest level. So you start off with two glasses one empty, one full, you'll end up with both of those half. You introduce a third glass and another paper towel and it will move and it will keep dragging the water almost in a kind of little um, little motion and you can kind of, until you get so every single glass has got the same level. I mine have been playing with this loads actually. We've got like, soggy bits of paper towel all over the house. Um, and that's just a very simple way of talking about colour and water movement. And then they can kind of take it on to, to you know, how much water that, that you can leave them to play. So one of the things that they, they haven't quite worked out in their head is that you need more water in one glass than the other. If you put two glasses that are the same, what's going to happen? Is the water going to move between them? Or will it stay exact, you know, will it just meet in the middle? So they can play around with it themselves and they can kind of work things out without you having to follow them. Um, so that's the end of my little uh, movement of water. I'm going to pass you back to Tricia. Thanks so much. All right, I loved all of those ideas, um, whether it be condensation, surface tension, melting, and um, the capillary action and talking about the different ways that water moves. And, and then add the density experiments from the ones I talked about. And you have some fun ideas for uh, water science with kids. And we'd love to see the things that you would do with water, any kind of water experiments or any type of water science that you would do with kids. So feel free to share with us in the comments uh, below this video or in our event page or on our Facebook pages, any, anywhere. We would love to see what you're doing. Uh, science at home, making science simpler and easier to do with kids and teaching them and being, not being afraid to use those big words like Maggie and Anthea said. So thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.